Hey everyone, welcome back. And for those of you new here, thanks for visiting. Now I've been testing this on box, ON box, ONN, uh, 4K TV streaming box. Uh, I've been, it's an underpriced box, under 20 bucks. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, uh, I'll get to know you video. And I'll show it, I'll put a link in the description for you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through step by step and show you how you can make this dude into a monster of a TV box. It's gonna blow your Fire Stick 4K out of the water, especially with Amazon firmware, but more on that in a minute. Now, if you follow these steps that I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to squeeze every drop out of this. I'm gonna, we're gonna squeeze every bit of juice we can get out of this box to give you the best performing box for 20 bucks, come on. Uh, <laughs> I've even put an APK, a live, uh, a live TV APK on it. And it had absolutely no issues. I mean, I've been playing this thing as my normal player, okay? Uh, Cause I like testing things to make sure before I bring them out to you. And I've been using it for live streaming and that kind of thing, movies and so forth. And it just rocks on. <laughs> so, Fire Stick's a good little unit. It really is, uh, except for, for $49.99 or whatever it was for, you know, that's not on sale. And the own box, on box, whatever, own end box <laughs> is under 20 bucks. This box, I am positive we can kick the crap out of the Fire Stick. Amazon doesn't care. They do not want your business. I've said it before. They want the person that's gonna pay the $19.99 to rent a movie, uh, the, you know, on and on and on. Uh, their services, which I do have videos on in my pocket, already filmed, I just gotta have time to cut them up and get them out to you. Stay with me, I'm gonna run you step by step through this to show you how this is gonna blow away the Fire Stick 4K and you're gonna like it, I think, much better. It's gonna be easier to use, it's, well, you'll see. Stick with me. Now, even though this is a quick guide, I am going to run through this step by step and you can rewatch anything if you need to, if you didn't catch it the first time. Also, check the timed video sections to scroll quickly. And if you need further help, just place a comment below. Now, I'm also going to show you how to add storage like a big box has. And don't worry, I'll have all the links and everything that I use in the description so you can jump on it after the video. Okay, it comes with its own box, and this is a nice small box. You can put it anywhere. Okay, you get that. You get the HDMI cable. You get the remote control. Pretty good to very good uh, quick start guide. And some two-sided tape. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's just so you can Stick it on the back and put it on the back of your TV if you like. Okay, now the build feels good on it, actually. It does feel, you know, nice. It feels solid. You don't hear anything in it. It is plastic. Um, it's small, you know, so that's kind of nice. Now, as far as the remote goes, as you can see, it is small also. It's a actual size and just thicker than the uh, NVIDIA Shield remote. Now the specs on this box. Now it's a 4K ultra high def resolution TV streaming. It has a two gigabyte RAM with an eight gigabyte storage. Now the Wi-Fi does handle 2.4 and five gigahertz with the memo antennas, by the way. Now it is compatible with Google Assistant. It has a CPU quad core Cortex A35. Now the GPU is a Mali G31 MP2. Now it does have Dolby audio and fast Wi-Fi. Now the input for power on this is a five volt one amp, so it doesn't take much to run it. And it's on the Google TV operating system. Easily set up with your Google account. I mean, real easy. And it's great for side loading apps that you need. Next, let's go ahead and get this thing hooked up and powered on. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get the very best speeds from the menu settings. Install all the software and apps needed and how to get rid of the ones that you don't want or don't need, we are gonna go ahead and sideload apps and more. Okay, as it boots up, guys, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pair the remote by holding the home and the uh, arrow key as shown. The pairing is complete. It, it really is simple and fast. Okay, we are in the United States, so it will be English, United States. 
Uh, we're going to be United States there. Uh, set up with Google Home app, which a lot of people, if they have an Android phone uh, with Google on it, uh, it has that in it, but you can always look for it in the Play Store for Google Home app. Uh, it's kind of nice because it, it will, you know, put all your devices into one where you can control all of them from one. Uh, it, it is kind of a nice thing to do, and it's it's easy setup on other things that are uh, Android. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and worry about any of the screens and all the rent me ads and all that like Fire Stick has, because we're going to go ahead and change that shortly. But the first thing you want to do is check for the updates, if there's any updates that are needed, and make sure you always keep it up to date. You can click on the gear right there, go to the system section and click on about. Now here you will see system update. Once updated, let's, now once it's backed up and all set, we need to go to the about section again. Scroll down to where it says Android TV OS build. Now go ahead and hover over that and click it repeatedly seven times to open up the developer options. It'll even count down for you right there. I click the back button to the system menu and scroll down to the developer options and click it. Now scroll down and click on the USB debugging. This is kind of like the jailbreaking of old, but this will allow us all to install third party apps but while we are in here, let's go ahead and take care of the back end stuff that we need to, just so we can get this taken care of. Now scroll down to the scale unit area, where here you're gonna change all three of these to 0.5. Now what this does is it speeds up the transitions when jumping around menus and screens and so forth. Every little bit helps. Now scroll down to the force allow apps on external. This is for adding external storage procedures coming up. Very important, you need to enable this. Next to set up in your new box is to click the back button to the settings and then click on the apps and scroll down to the security and disable play protect and app detection. Uh, you need to have both of these off right there. Uh, by having both of these off will help you later when you're side loading apps. But Google does that and they remove permissions and they do all kinds of stuff that I don't want them to do. So <laughs> next up is lightening the load. Now getting rid of some of these apps you don't use, absolutely no reason to have them, taking up storage space and resources. click on apps, then see all apps. Now here you see is a list of pre-installed apps that the box comes with. Now there are a number of apps I don't use and if I do in the future I can always reinstall them. Let's go ahead and get to installing unwanted apps like this and then use that same procedure for all the rest of them you don't need. Now we saved some storage, but remember, I'll be showing you how to easily add on the external storage here in a minute. One more thing you should do is to click on the cache data and click it to clear it. Click OK to clear it. Yeah, that's it. In my opinion, you should clear this once a week and on all systems if used regularly. Okay, now that we've done the back end stuff, let's go ahead and go to the home page. We're going to have to do some downloading now, but we're going to go ahead and need a piece of software that is used for downloading and I'm sure you're probably all familiar with it but let's go to the top make your way over to apps then scroll down to the search bar and then click on the voice assistant on your remote control and say downloader you can always type it into the downloader app will help us download and install some of the apps we're going to be needing okay now that we got the downloader let's go ahead and open it and you can browse and add to your favorites and more 
Let's go ahead and go up to the text field. And here you want to enter a special code. It's 307 106. Now this is going to bring up the ONN apps needed for this setup. Now I put it all right here just so you can have everything easy to get to. Now scroll down and be sure to get yourself a good VPN from Surfshark. Now for most, almost 80% off and two months free. Now you can order through here by clicking on the button or you can pick it up with the description in the link or the best way is to use this QR code to use your phone and pick it up and get it on your phone first because you're, you can control other devices after that and logging in and so forth to making it easier. Now, while we're looking at Surfshark, scroll down. You see the offer there? Go down to the bottom. You'll get a better offer with my discount link. Now, at the time of this video, you're gonna get 81% off and two months free. Like I said, you can also go direct with the link in the description. Next, let's go ahead and scroll down and install the apps that are listed. So you want everyone that's on there. <laughs> Here, I'll show you on the first one, then you can do the rest. Now, just to note, any future apps that will enhance this box will be listed here. So you might want to go ahead and bookmark this page. Now, if you haven't done it already, it's going to ask you to give the downloader permissions to install the apps. So go ahead and toggle the permissions and then it's going to load and ask you if you want to go ahead and install it. So go ahead and click on that button now. Now, once installed, it's going to ask if you want to open or done. Always click done. And this way you can click the back button and delete the install package you no longer need. There's no reason to have those on your system ever again. Because you can always come back here and get them anyways if you need them. And there you go. Click the back button and download and install the rest just like I showed you on this first one. The same way. Okay, now that we have everything, we need to continue on with and remember to pay close attention as we are getting closer to adding that external drive and system going. But first, let's do this before anything. Let's set up our Surfshark VPN. Assuming you have used my link or the QR code to download and install on a phone or a computer, click the login button. Here you're gonna see a login code. And this is where I was talking about, is use your phone and click on the settings, then click in enter login code. Then enter the code shown. It will automatically register the app on the ONN device. Now you're all set. Okay, now remember you can do this for unlimited devices, which I suggest you do. Anything that's connected to the internet, you should have a VPN on. Now that your VPN is set up, let's go and take a look at the other apps we installed. Okay, first let's go and take a look at the TV Bro browser. Now this is a no nonsense, no bloatware, no nothing browser. Now this does work very good. Let's take a look around it real quick. Now you're maybe wanting something a little bit more. So let's go ahead and jump into the Joysphere. Now, this is a very good browser, which is TV friendly. I started the load up with the standard mode. Now you can use the other modes if you want as well, but since you're already, since you already have a Surfshark VPN, there's no need for incognito mode. Now, as you can see, it has a lot more functions and recommendations than TV bros. Uh, but let's go ahead and bop around here for a minute. Then we can go ahead and check out the next app you'll like. Now, once you get a chance to play with these, choose the, which browser you, works best for you and uninstall the other one if you like. Now, the next essential app I like is Aptoid TV. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is a very good alternative to Google Play Store, but unlike the Play Store, not all apps have been vetted. So again, I recommend the VPN when installing from here. So let's go ahead and click on the OK button, then click Allow. Now they have a large platform with thousands of apps for all kinds of things. Then you can browse around, search, see what you want. We're trying to make this uh, box streamlined for you, so I wouldn't load too much into it.
Okay, let's go ahead and go back. Now remember, we did install Fast Task Killer, but for some reason it doesn't show up anywhere in the menu sections, and that's where the side load launcher comes in. Now the Android and Fire operating systems does not show some of the apps, but, but you can use this to get to them. Now let's click on the side load launcher to bring up all apps. Scroll to the Fast Task Killer, and once you click on it, a small window will pop up right here that has freed up memory by, by killing uh, processes behind the scene that don't need to be running. Next up, let's set up the mouse for easy navigation on apps where using a mouse is the best way to go. Okay, let's go ahead and click on Mouse for TV. Now scroll down and highlight the setup permissions and click it. Now scroll down and find mouse for TV and toggle the permissions on and then click the back button. Next, you wanna go ahead and scroll down the accessibility menu and enable the mouse toggle service. Then click on configuration. And it's gonna take you back to the mouse control panel. And as you can see, all the services statuses are in green. Now, next, let's go ahead and select a remote control button, such as, I'm going to use the input button on the top right of the remote. Now, I'm going to use this for turning the mouse function on and off. So, scroll down and click on detect. Follow the instructions. Now, go ahead and press the input button on the remote control for three seconds to set up the new boss key. Now, each key on the remote is mapped to a number. As you can see, the button is mapped to 178. Now click yes when it asks if you want to set this up as a new boss key. Now once set up, you can long press the button until you see the mouse move. Then a quick push to scroll mode, which is handy on like browsers and so forth to so scroll pages. Then to exit the mouse function, just long press it again and you'll see D-pad mode. That takes you back to no mouse. Now, if you're like me and you don't wanna see all the recommendations and rental movies and all that stuff that they splash on the screen, then you're gonna to wanna to do this next thing to solve that. Now let's go ahead and go over and click on Launcher Manager and click Enable Custom Launcher. Now be sure to put a check mark in the Always Allow from this computer and then click Allow. Now you're gonna to need to do this to help another function that's coming up. Now as you can see, it has a Wolf Launcher ready to go as the main launcher. So the main screen. Let's go ahead and click on the Home button on the remote. And this is the new menu page. No more ads, <laughs> no more of that other stuff that gets in the way, but a page that just lists all your apps right there, just go to them and you're done. Now there are other launchers out there that have different looks and so forth. You might wanna try those if this one is too minimalistic for you. Now if you wanna go back to the original, just open the launch manager and click on disable launcher to take it back to the Google TV. Okay, let's go click on home again, and there you go. Okay, here's what everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> Last but not least, adding an external setup for not only more storage, but additional USBs and other storage devices like SD cards and, and more. But to be able to use an RJ45 cable, patch cable, for direct internet connection option to your router instead of Wi-Fi. Not that their Wi-Fi is bad, it's just that if you can always connect, direct connect to a router, you're gonna get a stronger, faster, stable sim signal that way. Hey everyone, I hope I've given some value to you so far. Now we're not done yet, but if I have given you value, please be sure to hit that like button for me and subscribe. It's a little thing for you, but a big thing for me and the channel. Hey, thanks for the support. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this up. Now here are the things that you will need to get this done with and how to attach everything.
Okay, coming off the box is the included HDMI cable. And this is the power cable that comes with it. And that connects to your OTG adapter, which plugs directly into the TV box. With this hub, you can plug in the internet cable, and the hub comes with numerous inputs, such as USB-A for like thumb drives and like this Samsung 128 gigabyte one, I like. You can also use the USB-C here for additional power if needed to run on your uh, hub. So if you have a plug-in type, if you have a plug-in type drive you want to use, this will help with the power on it. Now let me go ahead and show you how to add the thumb drive to the system. Now start the TV box without the drive plugged in. Now once booted up, then you can insert the thumb drive and you should see a pop-up saying it's analyzing your media storage on that USB. Now once that's done, click on the settings button and scroll down to the USB drive to set up and click it. Now choose set up as a device storage. Next, go ahead and click on the format, which will format to the FAT32 for you. Now you can move files onto it, but we will go ahead and check do it later because really we don't have the files to move on there yet anyways. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the settings and the storage to make sure it's all good. Now with this external storage like this, I wouldn't run like games. I wouldn't run any of that kind of stuff on it. This is like if you put a media software on the main internal, then you can put the movies on the thumb drive. You know, something like that. Okay, now that we're almost done guys, we're getting there. If you want it to launch in the Wolf Launcher, set that up now, okay, with the Launch Manager. Go over to the Developer Options, then turn off USB Debugging. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow the thumb drive to be seen on startup. USB Debugging will hide the drive so if at any time the thumb drive isn't there and you know it is, uh, make sure that the debugging is turned off and restart. Now this is something I wanted to show you. Now this is very important, so please stick with me on this because it, it, it'll make a lot of sense here in just a second. Since I do a lot of streaming and my internet provider will throttle speeds, uh, almost all of them do now. Because of that, my speeds can go pretty low. Here, let's take a look. Now I use Analyti, which you can get through the Play Store or uh, your app toy store and I use that to check my speeds. Now this is what I got which is not enough to stream anything even YouTube. Okay now let's go over here and I'm going to turn on Surfshark VPN and run the test again. Now I'm waiting here for the new IP address to connect, uh, just so I know it's right. There it is, there it is. Now this is the IP address the provider will see. Now let's go ahead and see if they throttle us now. And there you go. And almost anything over 25 megabits per second is gonna stream just fine. I have a number of viewers that complain about buffering and the first thing I ask, are you running a VPN? And now you can see why is one reason why you get buffering. Now with this guide, I showed you how to get the best out of it and give you a good stable TV box for a great price. And if always, if you have questions or need help, put them in comments. You know, uh, remember to hit that like button, by the way, too. Uh, <laughs> it really helps us and subscribership. Okay, there you have it. Um, like I said, this dude's been working really good for me. I, I'm, I am so pleasantly surprised, and it's just a great way to go. Um, yeah, for this little bad boy that packs this much of a punch, it's worth the try. Um, like I said, I have all the links in the description for everything you're going to need. 
uh, you can probably have everything anyways. So um, you know where to get this. Unfortunately, uh, it has been brought to my attention that there's not a lot of Walmarts in uh, a lot of the other countries um, that my viewers are from. I am sorry. Um, sometimes the shipping is going to be more than it's worth. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if you have some way to get a friend in the U.S. that will send you one or, you know, next time you visit, uh, whatever. This is something I think you probably want to get. Well, I appreciate you being here and hopefully this helped you out. Hey, and if you could, please give me that thumbs up on that like button. It helps us out a bunch. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hey, remember, enter any of our giveaways too. So there's a video here somewhere that uh, will show you what we're giving away next. So until next time, I appreciate your support and we'll see you on the next one.